بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان ٹوڈیز کلاس وی ول بی ڈسکسنگ ون آف دا ویری امپورٹنٹ کنسیپٹ آف ڈیٹا اسٹرکچرس دیٹ از سرچنگ سو ایز وی آلریڈی ڈسکسڈ ود ان دا کلاس دے دا مین آئیڈیا آف دا ڈیزائن آف ڈیٹا اسٹرکچر از دیٹ وی شوڈ سلیکٹ اے اسٹرکچر فار ڈیٹا that is efficient in performing different tasks on computer uh, one of the tasks that is very frequently performed on the stored data and which is related to the organization of the data or you can say it is directly related to the data structure is searching so this searching searching is often performed on the stored data so if you have a record of data that maybe you can say the students they record or maybe the inventory record or whatever in the form of data which is stored in the computer and then you you need to perform frequently one of the key concept that is searching to search out some specific contents within the data so this is really an important task so we will be discussing this searching concept uh, we will be discussing what options we have what are their limitations and what are their pros and cons so one of the very basic technique that we can apply for searching of data is a linear or sequential search so the idea of this search is that if you have a record of data you have entries maybe for example you have 100 entries and the task you are going to perform is to search out some specific entry then using linear search the basic thing you can do it to start from the beginning of the data keep on retrieving each and every element and keep on identifying that whether it is the one that you are searching for or not so if the element you are currently visiting is actually equal to the element that you are searching that it then it means that you have found it out otherwise you keep on moving to the next and next element till uh, or you have visited all the elements so at the end of the search you may find an element or you may reach to the end of the element without finding it so in the both cases the execution of the linear or sequential search will stop uh, so these are the so the start so if you are going to implement this algorithm for every algorithm uh, that is performed it has some stopping criteria for linear search so if you think about it the the stopping criteria can be one of the two condition is actually one of the two condition the first one is that when you find an element then you have to stop because the task you were performing was to find that element and you have found it so stop executing further the algorithm another of stopping criteria would be that you keep on searching in element you keep on moving to next element and during that operation you reach to the end of the data then in that case of course once you reach to the end of the data and even if you didn't find it you don't have any other option to move on to the next element so you will stop again so these are the two stopping criteria that your algorithm should follow um uh, within this discussion i will be uh, frequently using the term list so because list is a very common term uh once uh, you say list then it's clear clear to every student that it might be a sequence of data or a sequence of something an organized way of representation of something so that in order to uh, in order to uh, represent that concept i might use frequently the term list uh so but also list is a specific term for a specific data structure as well so during current discussion whenever i am using the term list it doesn't mean that list term but it means a general concept of a sequence of data in in a list or in an organized form so is uh, 
it might be clear to you that uh, within the linear sequential search, search, you keep on moving to next and next and next element till you reach to the end of the list. So, of course, as you have visit, you may visit all the elements within the list, or you may visit all the elements within of the data. So, the order of its order of complexity is order n. Uh, another very important thing is that for linear search, it's not the requirement that the data have to be in sorted order. So if the data is sorted or unsorted, is the concept of the search is to visit each and every element. So if you are going to visit each and every element, even if it is a sorted or unsorted, it doesn't matter. So this, this linear search is not taking any advantage of the sorted form of the data. Now, uh, we will just uh, discuss its implementation. It might, it is in fact very simple, but still in the implementation point of view, if we see that, uh, if, you, if you are interested to write a function uh, which can perform a linear search, then what will be the list of arguments to this function? Of course, the first thing here is an array of items. So we need the list or array or the data actually in which we will be searching the second argument, which is a key. We have to search it out. So if we are passing the data in the form of a list or an array, you can say, and within the data, we have to find that specific element, then we also need its limits. That is the lower and upper bound. So with the help of these bounds, Within the body of this algorithm, this function, we will limit ourselves to the above, to the legitimate bounds of this array, so that we are we can make sure that we shouldn't get out of the bounds of this array, because in such case, if we do so, our program will terminate. So we don't want our program to be terminated unexpectedly. So that's why we need the lower, its lower and upper bound. If you see here, we have passed the array to this function, but we have passed just S with empty brackets, empty square brackets. So, so if we look at here, we haven't provided any uh, information about the size of the array. So that's why the array we will be passing to this function will be, you know, actually a pointer, a pointer to the first element of the array. So we will be actually be passing a pointer which will contain the address of the first element of the array. And from that address, we will be sure that, okay, this is the address of the first element, but we didn't provide any other information to this function through which we can, uh, we, we are in a position to know that what is the bound, what are the number of elements. So that's why we need this lower and upper bound so that through this low and high elements, we will keep track of uh, visiting the different elements within the bounds limit. So that's, uh, these are the different arguments we have passed to the function. We have defined an integer mm, i. We make uh, initialize it to the lower bounder. So this i will be used to uh, visit different elements within S array. So this is the actual while, while this is the loop through which we will be performing the linear search. So through this loop, we will be visiting the different elements uh, within the array. So we need to specify the two terminating condition. So if any one of these conditions become true, the loop will be 
uh, terminated. So as we can see, we have de defined conditional and here. It means even if the first condition become false, the loop will be terminated. Or if the second condition become false, it will be terminated. So the first condition is in the previous slide we discussed, we have two terminating conditions. The first condition is that if the a current element is not equal to the key, it means that we didn't find it keep on moving. So if this condition become false, it will be terminated. We have defined and so it means uh, just let me again rephrase what I said that when this any one of these conditions become false, it will be terminated. When, a, when both of uh, these conditions are true, then it will keep on executing. So uh, that's the main idea. So if the condition is true and this condition, the second condition, which is that we need to be uh, at the, uh, uh, we need to be the uh, below the upper bound and if the element we are searching is not yet found then we uh, keep on moving to the next and next element if any one of these conditions will become false the loop will be terminated and uh, we will the next jump on to the next statement that is if statement so if this loop is terminated we are sure that one of these conditions are false so if the first condition is false, it means that the element i element was actually equal to key. It means we found it. However, if the, there are chances that the loop may terminate due to the second condition becoming false, which is i is less than high, it means if this condition is false, it means that we have reached to the upper limit of the data or an array. And still we didn't found n elements. So here, after the while loop, we will check that whether we have found the element or not. So if si is equal to key, it means the element is found and we are returning the ith index. It means it is the index on which the key element exists. However, if this condition is false, this if is false, it means it's 100% guaranteed that the loop was exited due to the second condition that was that we reached to the end of the uh, array and still the element was not found. So in this case, we will just return minus one. Minus one is an index that generally doesn't exist in an array. So it will, if uh, this function returns minus one, it will provide information or signal to us that the element or the key that we are searching actually doesn't exist. So this all about the implementation of a linear search. Uh, the next search is a, an approved version, which is a binary search. So I use the term improved. What does improve? So what, what do I mean by improvement? Improvement by improvement, I mean that it's, it's computationally efficient. It means that if the problem is a searching problem, then it will find the key very efficiently with a uh, less number of while consuming least number of uh, computer or machines clock cycles. So it can with, within few steps, it will find the key. So it is its name is binary search. So you might already know the term binary. Binary means two, zero, and one. So it's something linked with two or by. So uh, in the next slide, when I'm going to explain this binary search, I will also uh, define this binary or two uh, type concept. That why the search was named as binary. Uh, the main condition for binary research to apply is that the element or the data that you are going to search need to be in sorted order. Uh, so in the linear search, we said that 
for the linear search, it doesn't matter whether the data is sorted or unsorted because linear search was not taking any uh, advantage of the sorting, sorted form of the data. So it was treating sorted and unsorted data in a similar way. However, in binary search, it takes advantage of uh, the it takes advantage of the uh, the sorted form of the data. Uh, so, hence, uh, um, and to that advantage, it's computationally efficient. So. In order to explain what is what the, the this the main idea of the binary search is, uh, um, you have to start from the beginning of the data, or you can say that for a binary search, the idea is that you start from the start of the list or the data, as we did in the case of linear search. Uh, so the data is organized uh, in a sequence form. You have the start of the list, the beginning of the list, you have the end of the list. And then the task is to find a key within the lists. Uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to find the middle of the, the list or the array. Once you have found the middle element, then you compare the key with the middle element. In the linear search, we used to compare it to the first element and then second and third and so on and so forth. And in the binary search, we used to find the middle of the data and then used to compare the key element with the middle element. Then after every comparison, you one of the three conditions might be true. What are those conditions? They are that the key may, may be equal to the middle element, or if it's not equal, then it may be less than the key, or it may be greater than the key. So one of these three conditions may become true. And if each of these conditions, after be, for each of these conditions, we have to perform a different operation using binary search. So what are those different conditions? So if the key is equal to the element element, though, then that's it. Because that was a task we were targeting to find the key. So if the middle element is equal to key, it means that you have found the element stop. However, if the key is less than the middle element, it means that whatever you are searching for won't be able after the middle element because we already know that the data is in sorted form and if the middle element of the data uh, is greater than the key or if the key is less than the middle element, it means the key will exist only to the left side of the middle element. Uh, the third condition was that if the key is greater than the middle element, it means that the key can only exist to the right side of the middle element. So, uh, in each of these different conditions, as I said, we perform a different task and after each of these different conditions, we again re-initialize our limit and keep on performing this binary search on the revised limits of the data. So how? So these different conditions will be explained in a bit more detail using this pseudo code. As I already said, that within the binary search, you have an organized form of data. You have to a key to be found within the organized form of data. Within the data for the data, you have a lower bound, you have an upper bound, 
and you will require to find the middle element the key is first searched with the middle element you may find a key or you can say that the key that the middle element might be equal to may be equal to the key or the middle element may be greater than the key or maybe less than key and for each of these different three conditions you perform you treat with, uh, it differently what are those the differences between the operations of these three different conditions will be explained using this pseudo code so uh, for the binary search algorithm you pass the data here we refer to the uh, data uh, using keyword list we define the element to be searched the keyword key and then upper uh, bound is specified using keyword upper underscore bound uh, we have defined index and found to other uh, to other you can say arguments to this function so uh, the first thing is that you have to define the bounds of the lists and keep you keep on searching the, for the key so once you for you have defined the bounds which is the first last and middle indices within the list the middle element is compared if the middle element is less than the key it means key is greater than the middle element it means the key can only be found after the middle elements after this condition you need to revise the bounds as the key can only be found at the right side of the middle elements so you make a new list which is a sub list of the existing list and for this and the bounds of that list will be its lower bound will be equal to the middle element and its upper bound will be equal to the upper bound actually the existing upper bound and you can revise the middle index by making lower plus upper divided by 2 uh, So that's one of the condition. So either the key, it can be less. If it's not less, then it means it's greater or equal. So in both cases, we will consider if it's not less, if the middle element is less than key is not true, it means the idle element is either greater or equal to key, or you can say the key is less than the middle, less than or equal to the middle. It, it means that we have to consider the lift half of the existing list. And for the list, lift half of the existing list, the lower bound will be the same how will the upper bound will be revised to the middle index and then you keep on doing this until either the list is empty or key is found so if the key is found or if the list sub list that we are searching for is empty then we will stop so let me again explain it with a bit more specific code here we defined n is equal to 100 so um, here the limit we have is from 1 to 100 uh, for the binary search 
algorithm we are passing the different arguments first and last are actually the bounds so first in for initially the first will be equal to 1 the last will be equal to the bounds uh, so which will be the last elements so we will keep on iterating a loop so first we have to find the middle index which is equal to first plus last divided by 2 if the middle element is less than key it means the key can be found to the right side of the middle element so in that case first will be revised to middle plus one otherwise if it is the, the middle element is no, is greater than key or equal to key then the last will be revised to mid minus one we will keep on doing this until one of the two conditions uh, become true that is first is greater than last it means that the first the lower bound has crossed the lower index has crossed the upper index if this condition become true or if we find found the key is equal to the middle element in both of these conditions if any of these two conditions become true the loop will be terminated so if the loop is terminated we will check that if key is equal to mid and it is found and the index is set to mid so found and index are actually uh, two terms which represents uh, the conditions the, the 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 information about the to one of the two information that whether it's found or not if found is equal to uh, found will contain the actual key element and the index will define the location within the array or list where that key exists so graphically I can represent this whole idea uh, here we have a list of alphabets a b d f g j k m etc represented in the pink boxes you can see that all these are in a sorted form then we are using three cursors one for will be pointing to the first another will be pointed to the last another will be pointing to the mid and to the left side we have labels first last middle list and key for every during every iteration these different uh, you can say uh, labels will be updated so initially you can see that first last we don't have any values for them but key is defined as p so within this binary search our target is to find a key element that is p using a binary search so the first step would be to initialize the first last and mid cursor so the first arrow will be pointing to a last is pointing to r and mid of this data is pointing to j this is the mid so we will def uh, we will initialize based on the green data and the arrows given to the different bounds we will define those for those these labels the first is actually at index 1 the last is at index 11 so first plus last divided by 2 is actually 11 plus 1 divided by 2 which is 6 so the mid is pointing to the sixth element uh, 
the content within the mid element is j and the key which we are found finding is p is the j is not equal to p it means it's not equal to uh, the j is not equal to key and we can say that we can see that j is actually greater than j is actually less than p if you consider a b c d in a sequence form and if you consider a is uh, less than b, b is less than c in such type of form, then of course if you can, it's clear that uh, p is greater than the middle element that is j. So you can see that p can only be found after j. So we need to consider the, if, if we consider this whole data uh, with reference to mid, we are 100% sure that it we cannot, we can never ever found, find it to the left side of the mid. It will always exist to the right side of the mid. So now we have to revise the bounds and we will move to the left, to the right half of the, this uh, list. So as you can see that you will see uh, within the next steps as well and it's clear from here as well and from the discussion that using binary search, actually, we are subdividing the existing list into two halves. That is the left and right halves. So we have a left half and then we have a right half. So that's why it is, um, it is named as binary search. It is dividing it into two uh, parts and one of the two parts is considered in the, the next step here in this step we will consider the right half we have to revise the bounds so the first will be mid plus one that is k the last will be as it is and the mid will be actually first plus last divided by two at the first is seven at index 7, last is at index 11, 7 plus 11 is 18, divided by 2 is equal to 9, and at the mid, the existing element is O, and the key is, that we are searching is P. The key that we are searching is P. So P is not equal to O, and of course, the key is greater than the middle element, that is O. So again, we have to consider the right sub half in order to find the key. So again, we will move on to the next step of the loop. We have to revise the first, last, mid and last. So the first will be moved to mid plus one, that is P. Last will be as it is. So the first is at index 10, last it is, is at index 11. 10 plus 11 divided by two, and if we round it up, it will become 10 so the mid will be pointing to p as well and the element that we have at the mid is actually p and the key is also p so it means that we have found the key so we have found the key so that's it so these were the different steps that you perform. Now let's try again the same algorithm. We have the same data, but the only difference here is the key is equal to E, not P, it's E. So uh, we will follow the similar pattern. We have to define the bounds first, last and mid. First is one last is 11, mid is 11 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 6, and the element at the mid is j, we are searching for e, e is less than j, so we have to move to the left half by revising the bounds, so the first will become 1 as it was previously, and we have only changed the last, the last is shifted from 11 to 5, and 5 plus 1, first plus last is 5 plus 1, which is 6 divided by 2 is 3, so mid will become 3. And the element at the mid is D. 
So if we compare it with the key which is E, it's not equal and also D is less than E. So we will move to the right half of this green list. So again, first will become 4, last will be the pre as it was previously, that is 5, mid will be 4 plus 5 divided by 2. If you round it, we will get 4. And the element at the middle is F and the key we are searching is E, which is not equal to, uh, F is not equal to E. So the middle element is not equal to E. Now we will move on to the next step that we that is to revise the bounds again. And we know that F is actually greater than the key element E. So if it is greater, it means we have to consider the left half. So for that case, we will change last to mid minus one. So mid minus mid first will be as it is and mid is uh, mid minus one, which is four minus one will become three. So now you can see that first index is four and the last index is three. So last is becoming less than first so that is the stopping criteria so we have to stop now so it means we have searched all the element and the element that we are searching for that is it doesn't exist actually so this is another condition through which our program uh, and array of element that is S uh, to the binary search function will uh, pass of course the key to the function that we are going to search within the list and we'll define its lower and upper bound of the data. So uh, we have lower bound, we have upper bound, but we don't have the mid bound. So in order to find the mid, first we have to check the condition that the low, if lower bound is greater than the upper bound, it means, okay, uh, that is the terminating condition, we have to stop. Otherwise, we have to find the mid by using this function, this uh, equation, low plus high divided by two, mid will be initialized. Now, element at the mid position will be compared with the key. If key is found at the mid, then we have to return mid uh, index. Uh, that is the stopping criteria of this function. So if it's not, if S mid is greater than key, then we have to recursively call the same binary function, but with a, but with a different bounds. So if mid is greater than key, it means the key can be found at the left uh, sublist. So for that case, uh, the low will be unchanged, however, the high will become mid minus one. While if this condition is false, then it means that its mid is actually less than or equal to key and then that case we have to call again recursively the same function but the bounds will be changed to the right side it means that the low will become mid plus one and the high will be unchanged so this is actually a recursive function which will keep on calling itself until this terminating condition uh, uh, is one of the two terminating condition becomes true. One of the terminating condition is if low is greater than high becomes true, then it will be terminated and it will return minus one. Minus one will be a signal that the element is not found. We have all searched through all the elements. Another term terminating condition is that the element at the mid is equal to key. It means we have found the key. In that case, we have to return the index of the mid element 
uh, which will of course be not equal to minus one l will be representing the index containing the key element uh, within the list so that's all for today thank you very much